from Google. So I am happy to, to always, I'm always happy to share it with teachers. I think it's a great tool for the classroom and I think it potentially can be a, a really useful tool just in your personal life as well. Um, so before we get started, uh, just a couple of things. Um, our, here is our upcoming schedule um, through the, about the middle of May. You can kind of see the things that are coming up. One thing I do want to point out is, <clears throat> excuse me, on April 3rd, uh, the USET conference, which is the um, big educational technology conference in the state, is happening. So if you, uh, Jerry, will you put the URL? I know it's just USET.org if you want to type that in quick. Um, if you'd like to join us at the USET conference this year, uh, you can go to that link and find out all the information about it. Um, it's a great conference, a great way to, to learn um, about more ways to integrate technology uh, into your classroom. So. Uh, check that out if you get a chance. Um, and I know the conference shared, it's not April 3rd, it's April 3rd and 4th, I believe. So it's a two day conference, a Thursday and a Friday um, out in Murray School District. Um, so also, um, let me just jump forward here. Um, just a quick reminder about how the Faculty Lounge works. Uh, it is recorded, so if you um, would like to uh, watch this again or watch any of our past presentations or would like to share this with um, your fellow teachers, then if you go to the Faculty Lounge um, website uh, at uen.org forward slash Faculty Lounge, uh, there's a link there to the archives and that's where the recordings will be posted. Um, also in that lower left hand corner down there, feel free to ask questions or make comments. Um, as um, we're looking at these resources, we're always, um, we always love to hear from you. And let's see, um, just uh, I think we've kind of covered that. If you do have audio problems, the best way to sort those out is to go up under the medium drop dropdown um, and do a um, run the audio wizard. And we, as, uh, as pretty much everyone else, we'd love you to uh, join us uh, on our social media. Uh, if you would like to like us on our Facebook page, we send out reminders about things like the Faculty Lounge, articles we find, upcoming classes, upcoming presentations and such. So um, we'd love to have you join us there on Facebook as well. Okay, so with that, I think we'll uh, go ahead and jump into our, uh, our presentation about Google Voice. So <clears throat> I've been using Google Voice myself for a number of years um, as my, per, my my sort of one personal phone number. Um, but instead of having me try to sort of give you the big overview of what Google Voice is, um, I'm going to play this little short video. So take a look at this. Over time, humans have continually come up with new ways to communicate. And while we've come pretty far, there are still some things that don't quite work the way they should. For instance, consider voicemail, which you can only listen your phone. It is stuck in your voicemail system, and it deletes itself automatically after two weeks. Or, say you're trying to reach a friend with a mobile phone, work phone, and home phone. Right now, you might call each number one by one, trying to find the person. And after you finally leave a voicemail, the guy has to call the right voicemail box to find your message. So we asked, what if telephony were reinvented today? The result? Google Voice. Google Voice gives you lots of cool calling features, no matter what kind of phone you have or which carrier you use. For instance, if someone calls your Google Voice number, you can have it ring all your phones, or none of your phones, depending on the time of day or the person calling. And if you let it go to voicemail, you can listen in before answering. Or just wait and read a transcript of the message, and maybe send a text message reply for free. And if you have an unwanted caller, it's easy to block them. The list of features goes on and on and keeps growing. Point being, in short, less annoyances and more awesomeness for free. So give it a shot. Visit google.com slash voice. <clears throat> okay, so I like how they say less annoyances and more awesomeness. Um, there is some challenge, I think, getting it all set up and understanding all the um, all the ins and outs of Google Voice, and I guess that's kind of why we're here today, is to to try to sort 
that stuff out. So um, let me, I'm going to share my computer screen here and, and uh, let's look at a few things. Okay, so you should shortly be seeing uh, my web browser. I'm just at google.com. And uh, the first thing is how do you find Google Voice? So you can sign up and start activating and start using it. Well, you can just, of course, search for it right here under using the search box. Or if you use the, their drop down here to get to their tools, you can see they, they put nine up there. And then I can go to more. And then way at the bottom, I can go to even more. And I can see the big list of tools. So here's where they list pretty much everything that's available. Um, and under home and office, you'll see Google Voice. <clears throat> okay, so I am already set up and logged into what my Google Voice account. Um, and let's uh, just talk about it a little bit. So you can see uh, here is the Google Voice number that, uh, that I've chosen. When you, when you go to sign up and activate your account, you kind of go through a process of picking that number. Um, and you can spend time trying to pick one that, uh, that's easy to remember. Um, it was hard to get one that had four, I mean, that had three of the same numbers in it. Uh, it took me about an hour just to get this phone number. Um, that was a couple of years ago, and I imagine the numbers are getting even more uh, rare, good numbers. So that's part of when you, when, you're, when you go through the setup process. Also, as part of the setup process, you must put in a, another phone number, a phone number that you might forward your calls to. So it does require a second phone number. So you could use a home phone or an office phone or a cell phone, it doesn't really matter. And we'll kind of look at those, those options here um, in a second. So at its basic, I can give out this phone number, okay, this 999-8044 number. And when somebody calls it, <clears throat> the minimum thing I can do when somebody calls it, I could have it automatically um, not ring on any other phone because really this phone number is not really associated with a physical phone. It's a Google Voice phone number, which means it's it doesn't have a dedicated um, handset. So um, at the simplest, you could just have it uh, automatically go to voicemail so that uh, parents or students could leave you voice messages without having to give them your personal phone number. Okay, so that's sort of the basics. They can also text you at this number. And um, surprisingly enough, it's all free. And you can see here, you're seeing my inbox right now. Um, and I'm just going to show you, here's voicemails. So you can see I have 839 unread voicemails. Actually, I read, I, I listen to these somewhere else. Um, so they don't get, they don't get checked off. And I have 80 unread texts. I would say that, that that's probably a much smaller number um, in reality. Um, so if I if I go, let's just look at the voicemails for a second. So the voicemails come in, and you'll notice this interface that I'm in uh, kind of looks like email. So I can come here, um, see that I have new voicemails, and I can listen to them right here. So you can see this one I just left for myself earlier today. Um, it, they try to transcribe what the voicemail says. You can see it right there. I said test, test, one, two, three, four, um, and it transcribed it pretty well. Um, usually, Google does a much worse job at transcribing these um, voicemails, but it doesn't matter because right underneath it is a button that allows me to, to play it back. So if I click on this, you'll see it starts playing it back. So I can actually I can hear the actual um, voice message that was left. Um, and then once I've listened to it, I have some, some kind of fun options. I can return the call right here or I could text. So it would call this number up here that it was made. So if I click call, you'll see it pops open and wants to help me place a call um, to that phone number. And you can see it, it wants to know which phone to use so, um, to make this call. So if I've given it my mobile phone number and I say use my mobile and connect, that's very interesting thing. It my, my mobile phone will ring. I'll pick it up and it will be ringing that 801585 number. Okay, so it saves me, I guess it's saving me the time of having to type in the number myself, but um, just sort of a shortcut. And if you've given 
Google Voice other numbers, like my work number or my home number, it would use that phone to place the call. Um, and then there's this last one down here, this Google Talk. So um, if you don't want to involve a phone at all, I can use Google Talk. And now we'll get to Google Talk here in a second, but Google Talk um, involves Gmail. So we'll go over to Gmail in, in a couple of minutes and take a look at that. Um, okay, so same thing with text. I can click text, except I can text, I can return text right from this interface. Um, and so hopefully that um, lets you see that, uh, that I can use this Google Voice number for communicating for people I give this number to that it won't involve my personal phone. Um, it's, I think it's a perfect tool for the classroom where you want to make yourself available to parents or students. In a, in a really convenient way, but you might not want to be giving out your personal cell phone number um, because now I can choose what happens to these calls and these texts that come to my Google Voice number. I could just check them, you know, once a, once a day, or I could um, have them forwarded to my my personal phone and answer them as they come in. Okay, so there's. Um, uh, my, my voicemails, if you look at the text, the text looks very similar. The interesting about the text messaging is that it keeps a record of the conversation. So let me just see if I can find one here that has a little bit. Uh, so you can see here's a, a text from a friend of mine. He texted me this information. I texted him back. And then he, you know, I texted him twice and then he replied. So I have a whole transcript of the conversation. Again, if you are choosing to text um, as text as a communication method with uh, parents, um, then it's sort of nice to have a whole transcript if you ever needed it. Um, and I'm not even going to talk about texting with students because I think that's a pretty risky thing to do. <laughs> so um, if it was up to me, I would I would not probably text have text conversations with students. Okay, so that's just a little um, indicator of how this works. Now, um, let's look at some of the options here when I set up. So I'm going to go over here to settings, um, and it comes up, and, it, and here's uh, where it can get uh, kind of interesting. So here's my Google Voice number. I told it about my cell phone. Okay, so you see there's my cell phone right there. And with just, just by checking this checkbox, um, Anybody who calls my Google Voice number, that call is automatically forwarded to my cell phone. So now, um, wherever I am, I can answer the, the, the phone calls that come to my Google Voice number because it just rings just like as if somebody was calling this number. I, I, don't even, I can't even tell the difference between when somebody calls either one of these numbers. I only give out this number, but I know in some instances people are calling this number, but I can't tell the difference. Um, I also can receive the text messages, right? So if somebody texts my Google Voice number, it automatically forwards them to this phone. Um, and this is the part I really like. If somebody calls my Google Voice number and they leave a voicemail, I get a text message on my cell phone that lets me know that somebody called and left a voicemail. So again, convenience um, makes, it, makes it really handy when if, if I'm having students and parents use this so at least I can get notified when somebody leaves a voicemail I don't have to come in here and check to see if, if I have a voicemail um, the other thing that, uh, that that this screen lets me do is you'll see um, down here it says uh, deactivate Google voicemail on this phone so I've activated what that means is, is that if somebody um, if somebody calls my this number right here, this AT&T number, um, and they leave a voicemail. Um, I used to have to go to my AT&T voicemail and listen to it, and then I would had I had two voicemails, so I'd be trying to, you know, check my voicemail in, in multiple spots, which was really annoying. Um, they and this is the part that I think is a little bit magic. Um, when somebody calls my AT&T number, uh, Google Voice is able to intercept the voicemail and it puts those voicemails all in my Google voicemail account. So with those two numbers, any calls are automatically going into my Google voice, voice messaging, which I think is awesome. So I don't have to worry about what number people are calling. Um, super handy. Um, and you can see I've got a work phone number in here, and I used to have a home phone number in here. 
uh, and why I put those in. Um, the reason for that is if, let's say I'm expecting a really important phone call, and uh, luckily I don't have to answer too many really important phone calls, but if I was expecting one, I could come in, I could give out my Google Voice number, then I could come into uh, to this interface and check all of these. And now when somebody calls that, that my Google Voice number, it rings on all of these phones. So regardless of where I was in the house or at work, or out somewhere, all of my phones ring, and it's going to be less likely um, that I would miss those phone numbers. If you want to confuse somebody, um, put their phone number in here, and then have your calls forwarded to their phone number, and uh, that would really confuse them. But it would be kind of funny, at least for a little while. Okay, so um, I think you hopefully you get the idea there. If you have any questions, go ahead and uh, uh, put a question. Uh, if you got a question in there, um, I'm going to look at a couple of other things here. Um, that you can see. So I'm going to go to this next tab. So of course you can record um, uh, the greeting that people give out or that, get, that, that gets given out when people call you. Um, and uh, lots of options here for calls, how you handle it, how the calls are handled um, when they come in. I'm hurrying along until I get to these groups and circles um, because this is the spot where if you um, want to have a different greeting depending on who calls you. Okay? So maybe you've got in your contact list, you have a, uh, a group you've created with all your family members. And you've got a group created with people from work. And if you're using this um, in a classroom, you might have a group with um, students or a group with parents that you've created. And you want the, um, the greeting that comes up to be different. And this is, I think, especially important if you're giving assignments to students, so they call in, they hear the assignment, which is the greeting, and then the message they leave is their submission to the assignment. Okay, so um, you say, okay, well, how do I make these groups? Now, if you look right over here um, in this uh, left-hand column, there's a thing called Google Contacts, and it's something that a lot of people may not have known they even had. Google is creating these, con this, it has this, this contact that you can, uh, this contact tool that you can use and you can come in here and I won't go through the process but you can see I've created these groups just by saying new group and then when I make a new group um, once I have a new group like let's say um, maybe this is my science class um, I can add users to that group so I can put up all my contacts and pick the people that I wanted to be part of that group and then, oops and then add those people to that group Okay. Um, I also could just add people in um, one at a time um, just by entering their name. Now, if your school is using Google Apps for EDU and the students all have accounts, that, that might this might be a lot easier because they may already be here in a group. Okay. So once a group is created, um, it shows up here in this list. And you can see here's that science group that I have created. I can edit it. And I can record a greeting right here just for people in that group when they call uh, my Google Voice number. So it might be a handy, might be a handy tool uh, for that. Okay, so um, let's. Uh, that kind of gives you a little overview of this Google Voice interface. But I think where most, most of the time when I use Google Voice, most of where I spend my time is here in Gmail. Um, it's really tied pretty well and integrated pretty well with Gmail. Okay, so let me turn off my uh, my email so you can't uh, see all my stuff. Um, so a couple of things. Um, back here, let me just jump back here quick. You notice down at the bottom of this, there was um, a, a phone in here called Google Chat. Okay, so that is part of your Google account. Um, so I'm going to turn that on. So when somebody calls this phone number, it's going to ring on my cell phone, but it's also going to ring here in Google Chat. So now where Google Chat shows up is here inside of Gmail. So I've got this sidebar, this right-hand sidebar over here that's turned on, and I can see a few contacts. Um, but if someone were to call, maybe I could get Jared to call my Google Voice number, or I could probably do it if he's if Jared can't can you do that, Jared? Can you call my Google Voice number? Um, and you'll see that if I'm sitting at my computer and um, 
Give me your last four digits again. 8044. I'm sitting at my computer and I have this Google chat turned on and somebody calls. You can see that it pops up here on the bottom of the screen. Now if I have a headset and a microphone, I can answer it right here. Um, and if I could hold up my uh, cell phone, my cell phone's ringing as well right now. Okay, so I could answer it either place. So um, I'm going to let, I'm going to ignore this and let that go ahead and go to voicemail. Okay, so that is um, Jared, my call's headed or Jared's call is headed to my voicemail, so you can leave a message there um, for me. Um, and uh, when he leaves that voicemail, a couple yeah, things are going to happen. <laughs> I can hear him across the cubicle leaving, leaving a voicemail. Um, when he leaves that voicemail, um, automatically I'm going to get a text and I'm going to get an email that lets me know that there's a voicemail available. Okay. So I already got the text, and I'll bet here in a second. There's the, you can see in the inbox right there, I just got one that showed up. So let's go look and see what that looks like. Um, so there's the email that came. And this has been really convenient for me personally, is that now I go to one place to check my um, email. I go to the same place to check my voicemail. So if I click on Jared's voicemail uh, it just came in, I can see that. Uh, Google has transcribed it. You can see right there they've transcribed it, and I've added a little um, little extra plugin here into my email that allows me to listen to it, and I can listen to it right here without having to go into anywhere else. If I click this link over that says Play Message, it takes me to that other Google Voice interface, but I don't really want to go there. I want to listen to it right here within my email, and so it makes it really easy just to click right there. Okay, so to get this to work, to be able to have this interface over here on the right that I can answer these phone calls if I'd like, and to be able to play the email right within, um, right within, my, right within the e uh, play the voice message right within the email, I've got to turn on a couple of things from the Google Labs. So uh, over here, I'm in Gmail now. I'm going to go to the settings, <clears throat> and when the settings come up look across the top and there is a setting there for labs okay so these are sort of extra things that you can turn on so as I look down here here's the first one I have turned on this is the Google voice player in mail so that's the one that let me actually listen to the voicemail right within that email that came without having to go over to uh, without having to go over to the, the Google voice interface okay so I just turned that one on and then the other one that is turned on is this right side chat. Okay, that's the the, the lab that puts this um, chat window over here on the right side. If you don't turn that on, you can still do all of this. It just ends up over here, sort of crowded in the lower um, the lower left hand corner. So it's kind of nice to have those things turned on. Um, I also have this um, text messaging um, in chat. Okay, so I've got that turned on too. So when those text messages come in, they can come into my email and I can reply to the text messages right from within my email um, as well. All right, so um, th those are some handy things to turn on that make this work a little bit better. Um, okay, so um, let's, uh, I'm gonna jump out of this. Um, now, when you start thinking about um, doing this uh, in the classroom, um, and giving out assignments. I've got a, a set of handouts for you that I'll pull up uh, in just a second so you can get some more ideas about um, uh, things you can do with uh, Google Voice in the, in the classroom. So, um, you know, mostly they involve having, you know, giving students assignments, having them, um, having them record at, um, uh, submissions via voicemail. So you're, you're giving them an assignment to go out and record such and such or um, tell you their feeling, you know, have them look at a piece of artwork and then they have to record what they thought about it um, or uh, a survey question. And then they call the Google Voice number and it gets recorded as a voice uh, as a voicemail or a voice message. Um, so lots of ideas for that. Um, you know, uh, this is fairly popular among foreign language teachers as a way of assessment. So the students call the, um, and leave a voicemail with 
um, their pronunciation or their reading or their translation they've done and then the teacher can go and listen to those later as voice messages. Um, so uh, I'll put these links up to these handouts here in just a second. I know we're just about out of time but I did have a, uh, just a couple other comments about this. So when you get a voicemail, uh, especially if it's a, you know a student has submitted something um, <clears throat> and you want to save it or share it, um, so let's say, you know, this voice message right here that I got, it's 19 seconds long, maybe that was from a student, and I want to keep that around, um, or I want to put it on my website, or I want to send a copy of it to um, the student's parents because I thought it was so good. Um, you come to this More button, okay, and under More, you can see I can download this voicemail, and it downloads as an MP3 file. Um, if I want to place it on my website, I can embed it, and I just get this embed code, and I copy and paste that. You could you could put these onto a um, a MyUAM page, and then a little player is there, and your visitors can click the player and listen to the recording. Okay, so kind of an interesting um, uh, extra feature here uh, that I think is perfect for uh, doing uh, for student work. And look at that. There's an email one as well. So I can send an email out that had a link. Um, to this recording. So some great ways to share the things that uh, maybe students are turning in. Um, all right, now, if as a teacher you start using this, you might fill up your inbox, because if you have you know, 30, 40, 50, 100 students who you give assignments to, your Gmail could get completely overwhelmed. So I just wanted to show one thing you might do. Um, I've got a a label over here called VM for voice messages, and I'm having these all the all the voice uh, Google voice messages that come in or voicemails that come in get filtered so they just are in their own spot inside of um, inside of my Gmail. So really quick, I'm just going to uh, remove this label so you can kind of see how this might work. Okay, so if you're you're in your inbox, uh, first thing I need to do. Um, is create a label, okay? All right. So if I'm in a in a in an email, I can come in and say, "Oh, I want a new label," and I'm going to call this one "Voice Messages VM." I deleted the other one. Okay. So now I've got a a, a a place to put these. So think of a label as a folder, and then once I have a label set up, I got to create a filter that automatically sends all of these kinds of emails to that label. Okay. So now that's set up, and I'm going to come up here. Uh, and if I can remember where it is. Um, all right, so I went to more and it says filter messages like these. So I'm in the Google Voice, I'm in one of my uh, voice messages, filter messages like these. So any email that comes from this email address, I am going to um, apply the label VM to it. Okay, and it, and it apply it to the old ones as well. And filter and now these all end up over there and now I didn't have it skip my inbox but I could have there was a checkbox that I could have it skip the inbox they don't show up in my inbox at all they only show up down here um, in this label or in this folder so a quick way to um, manage if you start you can see you could get a lot of voicemails if you're having students make submissions so if they could come jam uh, could really jam up your inbox you might want to create a label and a filter to handle that stuff. All right, so let's um, let's see. We're about out of time. Um, I'm just checking to see if we have any uh, questions. I don't see any questions. I'm just going to stop sharing here, and I'm going to pull out uh, these links. So if you want to uh, select one of these links and click Browse to, um, those are links to the handouts um, that I pulled up for just a second with more ideas about uh, using that using Google Voice in the classroom. Um, all right, so um, Jared, looks like you clicked on one of them, and, every, and <laughs> if a host clicks on one of them, everybody gets to see it. All right. Uh, <laughs> Um, one last thing too uh, that I didn't that I didn't really get a chance to, to, to mention. Um, a lot of people think that that if you have an iPod Touch, you can use Google Voice to make phone calls from your iPod Touch, and that's not true. Um, Google, if you want to do that, 
there is a method to use your iPod Touch to make phone calls using Google Voice, but you need more than just Google Voice. You need a couple other, another app and some instructions. So if you're interested in doing that, I know most kids I most kids that I know that don't have a cell phone who have an iPod Touch, they know how to do this. So you could ask them, or of course, if you just Google it, um, how to use my iPod Touch to make phone calls with Google Voice, there are some really quick, easy instructions to, um, to follow. So. Um, do that. Also, Google makes a widget in Google for Google Voice that you can put on your website um, that your visitors can click on, and it's a quick way to connect them to your Google Voice um, phone number to be able to leave voice messages. So if you have students doing it a lot and they can't remember your Google Voice number, you could put that widget on your page, and they could just uh, use it to help connect them to your. Uh, to your Google Voice account so they can leave a message or, or leave the assignment. Okay, all right. Uh, I think that is all we have for today. And uh, I appreciate you guys stopping by and, uh, and participating with us. Um, and I hope you have a great rest of your week and we will see you next time. Take care.